Andrew, very, very powerful storm makes its way into southern Florida. MIA is Miami. Even a closer view will show the eye wall making its way across Elliott Key and over toward Sands Key. That's this region right on through here. And we believe maybe over to around Princeton to Cutler Ridge, that could be where the eye crosses land. Right now, it is about 15 to 20 miles off the coast with already very powerful winds with the eye wall making their way into southern Florida. Complete update at the bottom of the hour. That is the latest radar showing intense rain and extremely high winds making the way right on through Biscayne Bay. It seems like the hardest hit area from Hurricane Andrew will be South Miami down to around Florida City, Cutler Ridge right about in the center, already around Elliott Key and Sands Key. It seems like the eye is now making landfall. It's moving through Biscayne Bay and over to around Cutler Ridge. Watch this radar here. You see a little bit of a darker red here. That is an extremely high wind there could easily be well over 140 miles per hour and that gust as this storm makes its way right on into Biscayne Bay again look for the storm surge to be maybe 9 to 13 feet very high storm surge in Biscayne Bay a little bit of a lesser surge north of the eye wall especially but still the surge could be quite high let's take a look at the latest facts and figures here they are 20 miles east southeast of Miami again this will be updated it seems like the eye is making a landfall right now. It's still moving west at 18 miles per hour and the Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft is still investigating the area and it is still showing that Hurricane Andrew has not lost. Itself will do much more damage without uh, tornadoes even in itself. Here's the latest satellite photograph and again showing the cold cloud tops here. It's not a radar, just showing the most intense thunderstorms. This is a very well organized storm system and you can see the eye just about ready to make uh, landfall there and it should emerge off the west coast later this afternoon then again we're going to be watching it as it makes a curve farther to the north and eventually it's going to take a probably a day and a half to two days but up toward north central gulf coast the storm is in biscayne bay you can see the eye very well defined elliott key down to sands key the eye passed over that region south of uh Biscayne Bay winds also quite strong. It seems like the hardest hit areas are going to be South Miami down to around Florida City. It's going to be over land, but it should re-strengthen once it makes its way off the southwest coast of Florida. That's a little bit later. This here is Dade County, and it's going to slide through central Dade County over toward Collier County, Everglades City. Out of the Hurricane Center, which is just on the northern side of this here in Coral Gables, of sustained winds at 115 miles an hour with gusts up to 152. That is very close to where Dennis Smith is right now. Dennis, uh, give us the latest on what you're experiencing, obviously quite a bit. Uh, yes, we certainly are. In fact, the winds continue to blow us around, and I could uh, pretty well verify that we've probably seen that 120-plus even here. We've had, uh, over the last hour, a lot of the roofing around the particular structure we're in getting peeled off. We've heard some more glass shattering. Uh, again, we haven't been, been with power for a couple of hours now, and the winds have just dramatically dramatically come up. Um, you reported the Hurricane Center, which is not too far from where we're at, had a peak gust of 152. Uh, we have seen palm trees literally bend in one direction and snap back up, uh, upright again. Uh, we've heard and seen some of the tree limbs snapping. I'm kind of getting a sandblasted effect because of the pebbles on the roof are kind of being blown around as well. Uh, we have not experienced any calmness, though. I mean, it has been continuous increase in the winds. So as far as our exact position in relation to the eye is kind of hard to determine, but we are starting to feel the wind shift around a little bit. They were coming from my left to your right, uh, my left to right, and now kind of coming at my back and uh, coming a little bit occasionally from my right. So we're getting the gustiness, and we're also getting the shift in the winds taking place. But uh, as you pointed out, I think we're just about at the peak we're going we're gonna to feel in the Coral Gables area. Right in the middle of things. The full fury of the hurricane is there now. That's as bad as uh, just about as it's going to get because they've already had gusts over 150 miles an hour at the uh, National Hurricane Center, which is right there near where Dennis is. And we've had reports just offshore at Calvary Rocks that sustained wind was 140 miles an hour with gusts of 160. So it is a good category for hurricane. It is making landfall. 
it's sped up a little bit now. It's going a little bit faster than it was, so it's going to be racing across the southern tip of the state and affect the communities on the other side, Naples, for example, Marco Island. They'll be north of the uh, center, I think, so their winds are going to be offshore. And the onshore winds south of the eye, as it emerges on the west coast, are going to be down pretty much in non-populated areas. It went down to 932 millibars. Did, was there some strengthening before it made Oh, yes, uh, there was. Uh, there had been some weakening early in the evening. Of course, we were down to 922 millibars pressure and 150 mile an hour winds at one time, and then it dropped off. But just as the hurricane was approaching land, it got better organized once again, and I think the winds picked up just a bit. All right. Thank you very much, John Hopeful. Over Dade County. Here's a closer look. The strongest uh, thunderstorm activity, the highest winds right in this area, right around the center, the lull in the center of the hurricane, the eye, which is coming on shore now. And in this general vicinity, in the eye, the skies may partially clear and the winds drop off and become very light. But again, as the eye passes by and the eye wall moves back in again across the coastal areas, the winds will pick up and could become very, very damaging again. Today, as it passes inland over South Florida, but it is expected to move back out into the warm Gulf waters this afternoon and tonight, and that could open the doors for re-intensification. And as it heads off to the west-north, to dry Tortugas, a little farther north, we have hurricane watches. Strike probability, of course, it is hitting. Or they did have a wind gust at Miami International Airport up to 92 miles an hour. Earlier, the hurricane center just to the south in Coral Gables reported a wind gust of 165 miles an hour. So some very gusty winds, and I'm sure a lot of news to hear about this. They definitely feel the winds turn around, and they uh, just a few minutes ago, probably even the strongest I have felt since we've been here, uh, within the last 10 minutes, we all commented that it looked like uh, they had come back on around more to an east. Uh, maybe even a southeast direction now, and uh, the wind speeds were probably topping out at over 150 miles an hour. And again, similar conditions. Well, at least somewhat from a video standpoint. This is downtown Miami, and this is uh, in the business district down there. This is a department store, the uh, Bur Burdenist department store, excuse me, and they got their windows blown out down there, and you can see uh, some of the damage that they'll be assessing a little bit later on. We have also got some shots from the downtown Miami area out through the MacArthur Causeway toward Miami Beach. Beach, and they saw some uh, very, very unsettled weather there with uh, some of the waves being kicked up over the over the causeway as well. So obviously not the place to be. And this was shot just a couple hours ago, so not even at the time of uh, landfall with this hurricane. John Hope joins us now. Severe hurricane. It weakened a little bit this evening, uh, last evening, but it certainly intensified again somewhat. We could really see it on the satellite pictures and the radar as it approached uh, Biscayne Bay. So it got a little bit stronger at the end. That was reflected in the pressure and some of these wind readings that we're getting the 165 gusts or whatever it was at the National Hurricane Center and then we had the automated station out at Fowey Rocks that had a sustained wind of 140 miles an hour with a gust to 160 miles an hour so these were certainly very strong category four uh, category four on the staff reception scale winds uh, since it came in at the time a high tide but the kind of winds it had that they would have uh, a very very high tide along uh, uh, well, Key Biscayne, Miami Beach, and certainly in Biscayne Bay. All right, John, let's talk a little bit about uh, Andrew from this point on. Well, this is round one across Florida. Of course, we still have to deal with Andrew even on the west coast of Florida. It's going over there. I think it's in the Gulf of Mexico. And even though it may decrease a little bit with the eye over land, because uh, hurricanes almost always do, it will regenerate very quickly in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, and that's something we'll have and to have, face in the days to and come. It will be a landfall, another landfall in the Gulf later this week. Okay. Mr. Radar, and there you see uh, the eye of the storm has already made landfall just south of Miami, moving across Dade County right now. Still packing winds of 140 miles an hour. It's about 25 miles south of Miami. And uh, continuing its westward march across the southern part of the Florida Peninsula. Here's a close up radar view of Andrew as it heads off to the west. You can see the most intense part of the storm, the eye wall, right outside the center, moving directly across Dade County towards uh, Monroe County in the southwest part of the state. Now, under the eye wall, we've had wind gusts reported as high as 165 miles an hour at the Hurricane Center in Coral Gables, uh, just south 
of Miami. Again, storm surges may be a problem. There's obviously going to be extensive damage across southeast Florida due to the uh, track of uh, Hurricane Andrew. Jim, that I think they have backed down a little bit. Maybe they're under 120, approaching 100 miles an hour now. Uh, we had our peak guess probably at about uh, 4.45 a.m. to about 5.15, pretty much as expected to make landfall at about 5 a.m. Our Probably our peak guess was very similar to that of the Hurricane Center, using them as our, our benchmark, 165 mile an hour wind gusts. I know we had winds that were probably in excess of 120 miles an hour, but that makes the mark, 165. That's the official one. At the Minutes ago in the Miami downtown area, and sure enough, you would not be surprised to see what's been happening here with the power lines being blown out, the transponders, like uh, Dennis was telling us, trees down, lights blown out, as well as uh, glass shattered all over the place. So a very miserable time of it in Miami this morning. And uh, John Hope joins us now here in the Forecast Center to give us a perspective on what is obviously history in the making. Well, now the cleanup begins. Yes. We don't know exactly how much damage uh, there's going to be there, but we know there, is, there will be a lot. We don't have any word yet on how high the storm surge was. We're anxious to hear that from across. And this is going to be back out over the water uh, early today, you know, by, by midday, I think. And uh, it's going to come very close to Marco Island here as it, as it comes on across. Uh, they'll have an offshore wind to begin with, but once the hurricane gets out here a ways, then they'll get the circulation on the backside, and that will bring some higher water back in there, I think. So it's going to be a major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's going to be uh, another landfalling hurricane, too, in the northern Gulf. And we haven't been able to pinpoint the area yet, but we're going to be doing that. Okay, we're taking a look at some more pictures now of the downtown area, and again, folks, you know, this is a pretty good coverage from the downtown area throughout the MacArthur Causeway out toward the beach, and you can see just a lot of damage, and obviously things aren't going to be very, very pretty when the sun comes up this morning in Miami, Florida. Again, as uh, John was saying, we have to watch Andrew as it makes its way across Florida into the Gulf of Mexico. Higher than normal along the western coast of Florida, and with that flow coming up out of the southeastern areas later on today, may see some tides running a little bit above normal as well. Or towards the southeast, and there could be some fairly high surf, but right now the warnings and watches have li been lifted. But from Mobile to Sabine Pass, we have a hurricane watch. Tornado watch. The latest picture of Hurricane Andrew top winds still continue to be 140 miles per hour, and it continues luckily now churning away from Florida, moving on to the west at about 18 miles per hour for the entire Florida Peninsula. Here again, a picture of the hurricane. There's a very well-defined eye. It came right across just about over Key Biscayne, then right across the Everglades, and it was only over land for about three, three and a half hours, so really didn't get a whole lot of time to weaken, and now it's over very, very warm water, water roughly in the middle 80s, so it should maintain that strength as it tracks westward, may begin to track west-northwest later on today from here on out. Here's a look at the radar picture of the eye clearly seen right about in there. You can see some drier air starting to wrap in around the center, but that should be just an aberration. Should go back to a very symmetrical looking low pressure area. Even on radar, it looks like that rain band should fill in pretty quickly. Everything moving off towards the west northwest. These are pictures taken in and around Miami Beach, Florida. You can see the destruction wreaked upon the area. Winds at Miami's International Airport gusting to 115 miles per hour. And at Coral Gables at the Hurricane Center, winds as high as 165 miles per hour. Unfortunately, 12 fatalities, and looks like the situation is not, it's pretty grim down there, but luckily things improving now over Florida. At least as strong as it was in Florida. The medium probability is out from about Pensacola to Galveston, Texas, so we're looking at this entire area as the area of greatest threat over the next day or so. As early as tomorrow evening, it could be making landfall on the coast. As we get our hurricane force winds near the center and tropical force storm winds, tropical storm force winds still over 100 miles. Discernible. And actually, the storm has deepened a little bit in the since the last reconnaissance aircraft has gone out there. The lowest pressure now at 939 millibars, and that is down a good uh, four or five millibars from the last uh, fix that we had. The latest position centered at 28 north, 90.1 west, or about 130 miles about due south now of New Orleans, Louisiana. Highest winds still estimated to be around 140 miles per hour of a, uh, a move.
move toward the, the northwest. And again, you can see the eye on this uh, radar composite. Again, you can see how it's moving on off toward the northwest, just south of MSY, which is the New Orleans airport, out into the Gulf. You can see the circle there uh, enclosed by the green. That is the eye of the hurricane. John Hope and John, again, the storm steadily moving toward Louisiana. Not much doubt mm. of that now. Yeah, I don't think it's slowed down a lot. Uh, we are anticipating it might slow a little bit when it gets up closer to the coast, but the best I can see, it's moving nearly as fast as it was. Perhaps it did slow a trifle. The main thing I do begin to see a little bit over the last several hours, all morning it moved toward the west, northwest, and now it appears to me to be moving a little bit more towards the northwest. And a northwest movement, uh, that would, uh, if it continued that, that would be closer to the coast of Louisiana, so by earlier this evening, conceivably, the eye could be there. But nevertheless, we mustn't think of this as being a point. This is uh, hurricane uh, force winds are now spread out 70 miles, and uh, even as we speak, the uh, eye of the hurricane is less than 100 miles, certainly now, from Grand Isle. So hurricane force winds are about to begin over the southern Louisiana. Notice all the reds and oranges earlier. In fact, the orange and red now decreasing, indicating the cloud tops, the coldest cloud tops are warming, uh, probably a sign that the storm is weakening somewhat. This is certainly not uh, by any means uh, time to let your guard down and getting a false sense of security, but uh, it's likely as the storm makes landfall, it will not pick up any more steam. Give you a better idea of the uh, rainfall so far. Just in the past hour, a wind gust to 47 miles an hour at New Orleans International Airport. There's the eye of the storm. This is uh, Terrebonne Parish. This is Marsh Island, Vermilion Bay, and a Chafalaya Bay right here. It seems to be maybe wobbling a little bit uh, uh, to the uh, more to the west than north. Also notice the speed has slowed down uh, just a notch or two over the past several hours, delaying landfall. But these southern uh, areas of Terrebonne Parish obviously getting hurricane force winds reports that travel has been cut off. If you live uh, south of I-10, you need to evacuate if you already haven't. Uh, travel uh, south of Interstate 10 is certainly discouraged. Do not travel south of I-10. Already reports from the Morgan City area of power outages and some uh, wind damage. And uh, our reporter down there reporting uh, deb debris being blown around as he was traveling up Highway 90. There's the uh, extent of the rainfall. And of course, a lot of rain with a slow movement of the storm. It could be some serious flooding problems. An hour moving northwest at 13 miles an hour. We'll have another update in the next 45 minutes. Line, hurricane conditions already being experienced in those southern parishes. Oh, this coast is oriented from uh, northwest to southeast. And the eye of the storm, uh, the hurricane is moving toward the northwest. Now, the eye wall is actually on, share, uh, on shore here in the Terrible and Parish. And I'm sure they had some uh, very, very windy conditions already at Homa and Morgan City. And it looks as if the eye will be pretty near Morgan City over the next few hours as it uh, skirts on, maybe edging its way very slowly inland before it finally gets inland. As you very aptly pointed out, though, and especially looking at that satellite picture, we can see some warming of the tops, and I think that indicates eventual weakening. And that's good news in the sense that once this gets up here toward the more heavily populated areas, we won't see, I feel pretty sure now, the kind of devastation that we saw in South Florida because it, it will be coming on down. Of course, we expect it to weaken anyway when the eye gets in, and a lot of the circulation here has been over land, and that very often causes a hurricane to weaken all. Andrew, uh, maybe, maybe just weakening a little bit as it moves on shore. Now, indeed, we're talking about the eye still clearly uh, visible on this um, radar imagery. The extreme southern parts of Louisiana there. The eye wall has been on shore there of Terrebonne, southern Terrebonne Parish. Now, this is mostly um, very marshy swamp land, and there's not a lot of people who live here, but there are some isolated places here that uh, had some people or have some people living there and they to be sure got really really uh, lashed with a lot of hurricane force winds and a lot of rain joining me right now in the forecast center senior meteorologist Stu Ostro and Stu uh, what can we discern from uh, what we've seen over the last couple of hours here well Jeff has been throwing us a couple of curveballs however what we think's happening is it's maintaining a general northwest motion those uh, loops or wobbles that we've been talking about of uh, uh, you know, been just causing some temporary departures from that. Looks like it did a little loop. It appeared to stall 
uh, but it really was still moving northwest. And now in the last couple frames here, you see it taking a little jog to the north. Uh, so the net effect is that it's moving a little more slowly, but still making slow northwest progress. Another thing that we notice is that it has uh, apparently begun to weaken a little. Still, though, right around the center here, uh, very strong winds, uh, and undoubtedly right along the coast and inland a little bit here, it's a, it's a really nasty situation. A lot of heavy rain with this, and with the whole system moving slowly, uh, we do expect uh, perhaps some flooding problems just from the rain over the next 12 to 24 hours. Right in here, around the periphery of the storm, uh, have been the ones that have been producing those tornadoes, and as you mentioned, we are receiving increasing reports that that's been going on over the last few hours. It may be diminishing, but we're not out of the woods yet. Right. The uh, reason we took the color off is uh, because this shows the uh, loops that the eye is doing very well. Uh, putting the color on shows us th some things, in fact, that help give us a clue right away that it may be starting to weaken. But here you can see very vividly the, the circular nature of uh, the way the center is wobbling around. 810 over the Mississippi River. So I would imagine all these cars going past this one exit here have got to turn around or are being turned around by the state police because the next exit is basically over the bridge here. This is the LSU exit. And uh, usually this time of the morning, it's about 7.30 locally here. This place would be full because it is a rush hour. But everything is shut down in Baton Rouge this morning. And we have just uh, really, really gusted here. Winds are definitely gusting to very strong tropical storm strength. You can see things blowing around, grass and wind and leaves. I'll show you some pictures out of New Iberia, which were taken a little bit earlier this morning. And you can see the problem they've had out there. Now, this is closer to the center of the storm, where you're saying the most powerful part of the storm is. And they have had reports of large trees down, 90 to 120 mile per hour winds there. And obviously, emergency crews are having a tough time getting in to assess the situation. Mark. That the uh, storm during the course of the night moved fairly slowly, not much higher than 10 miles per hour. Also took a track toward the northwest, right up along the central Louisiana coast. That was good news for New Orleans, even though they had a very stormy night. It was not the worst case track for them. Also good news for the upper Texas coast and the areas over near Cameron, which uh, didn't have too bad a situation either. Not the same in between, though. A very rough night in the area around Morgan City. And down around Grand Isle, Louisiana, we have reports of some parts of that barrier island underwater there. And of course, uh, power was knocked out. And with that storm surge moving in along the coast, the low-lying areas were inundated with several feet of water. Levitating slowly north or northeast. Uh, we're looking at many more inches on top of that. OK, it seems like the core of the rain right now is between Baton Rouge and Lafayette and down towards the coast, down around in New Iberia there. Right, that is the uh, core of the rain. And even though what we're looking at here is the rain, I think we can pretty well say that represents the strongest winds at at this moment, too. Uh, gusts to uh, 60 and higher. Lafayette, Baton Rouge, and even higher than that, a little closer to the center. Okay, we've had reports of very high winds down around the coast. Winds over 120 miles an hour. There's been quite a bit of damage from those winds near the coast. And now we have uh, the heavy rains, and there could be even more damage to that, maybe. We had an inch an hour or so, and by the end of the day, we could be looking at some very, very heavy amounts. Yeah, winds to 115, and it's drifting slowly northward, and that's the worst-case scenario. That means heavy, heavy rain on a state that doesn't need any more rain. For across the nation, high pressure in the Carolinas and Georgia. Lafayette, Louisiana, with winds still gusting better than 120 miles per hour. Let's take a look at the circulation system right now. It continues to move inland. The, uh, completely now, the land, the eye is over land, which means this system will begin to weaken rather gradually, not rapidly, but gradually during the next several hours. Still looking at hurricane force winds to be persisting into this afternoon. And then we'll be looking at tropical storm, Andrew, later on tonight. Very heavy rainfall continues to spill northward. There is the eye of the hurricane right there, just drifting very slowly on towards the north. Again, almost eventually, it's going to be just about midway between Lafayette and Baton Rouge. And of course, it's around Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where Jim Cantori is this morning. We'll have another live update with him at the top of this hour, so stick around with that just a few minutes from now. Of course, the darker banding means very heavy rainfall. It's going to be sticking around with this slow movement. We'll be looking at some heavy rainfall to be persisting well into this evening over the deep south. Here's a tropical storm Andrew as it lifts northward. Still a large circulation, a lot of moisture, and that's the concern now, the fact that there is moisture in a decaying hurricane, at least once hurricane, in light time. Here's a look at the uh, latest radar, and you can see the center of the storm, the center of the circulation here, lifting north almost right along the Mississippi as we head up toward Natchez, Mississippi. Showers and thunderstorms swinging around that, and some really squally weather. And keep in mind, some of these bands here 
could produce those tornadoes as we head through the afternoon. Another satellite vantage point showing the darkest reds here and the yellows indicating the highest cloud tops or where the thunderstorms are most active. Tropical storm, top winds now are dropping. They're down to 50 miles per hour. We have brand new coordinates for you, by the way. The tropical storm centered at 31.2 north and 91.5 west.